Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective perspective. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 hard to find that time of when to transition because I like to talk with people to get them used to the microphone, mm-hmm. or, like the microphone and the yeah. headphones and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But to find that that point, I'm like, hey, stop there. Let's yeah. let's start with that. Yeah, because I, I like where this is going. Yeah, I I, I feel like I, it's not like the same as Xbox Live, but it's really similar. Because like, <laughs> I've had like these same type of like uh, like interactions, like microphone to like person to person type thing. Can you hear yourself on Xbox Live? If there's an echo, for sure. Okay. And not it's not typical, but it's it, it can be faint. So it's here and there. But well, back on the topic of Jordan Peterson. Yes. Absolutely. And and I I love that advice. Not listening, listening and actually processing what they're saying, mm-hmm. instead of listening to respond. Yeah, I I think of it more of a respect thing, um, not trying to, like, because like if somebody's talking to you, they're trying to share what they care about, what they feel. They're they're trying to, like, send a message. So I just think it's only out of respect that I'm gonna hold off my thoughts and just listen to what you have to say so that I can possibly even learn something. Whereas opposed to somebody's like just talking my ear off and I'm just trying to comment back to like make the conversation cooler or better. So you're trying to like, you're not trying to like have a de- deep conversation. You're just trying to build on what the other person to say and like try and one up them. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like at a, like I at wasn't bar. listening to a word you just said. Really? I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> no, I agree. I agree. And there are people that are very selfish, like intentionally selfish, or maybe not even intentionally. They don't even realize that they are being selfish with the conversation, but they always find a way to draw it back to them. Yeah. Or they, they find a way to draw the conversation to wherever they want to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's kind of like uh, the bar conversation. Um, say you're like trying to talk to a girl you've never met before or something. It's like uh, you might not necessarily t- you might not ne- be necessarily trying to like have a deep conversation with this person, but you might just be like talking to talk, maybe like to like break the ice or something. I don't know. Okay, yeah. But that's like where I kind of like revolve it back to. That is interesting because sometimes the different dynamics, there are certain things you probably should do. Like if you're trying to, I don't know, like meet this pretty girl, mm-hmm. then maybe you should try to listen and like get her talking a little bit more and then give some of your feedback versus here it's like just open conversation Mm -hmm. about whatever just kind of sharing ideas and whatnot yeah it seems like if you're not like friends with somebody then you don't know what they're talking about like it seems like when you pick up on a conversation everybody always wants to talk about themselves so i think that might be where it kind of draws back to is like when you're starting a conversation, that's actually also something I try and do if I'm not familiar with somebody is I'll try and get them to talk about themselves. That's awesome. Because everybody is their favorite topic. Does Absolutely. That, does that make sense? I know I know. with this and just in social situations, I think a, a good rule to go by is to try to get people comfortable talking with you. Yeah. And if you get them on the topic of them talking about themselves, mm-hmm. it's – it's a breeze at that point because yeah. I agree. Everybody likes to talk with themselves. Yeah, comfortability is huge. That's uh, that's like something I always try and strive for. That's like I mean, that's like with like the fit I'm wearing. Like it's comfortability. Wear what you're comfortable. Do what you're comfortable with. Like say what you're comfortable saying. Like talking about things you're comfortable with. Absolutely. That's uh. That's why introverts are some of my favorite people, because th- it's almost like you have to crack their code before they open up. Yeah, it's like, how do I get this person comfortable around me to the point that they, I get to see this awesome personality that's inside? Because yeah. I don't know about you, but some of my favorite people, one of my roommates actually, I consider him an introvert. I don't know if he considers himself one, but he is so fucking funny, dude. This mm-hmm. guy is hilarious. But like, yeah. at first he's he's a little bit, you can tell he's not super comfortable, at least my analysis of him. Mm-hmm. He's not super comfortable around you at first. Okay. So then some people are really, like, like quick to judge and be like, oh, that guy's weird or that guy's, like, awkward or something like that. Yeah. And he's an archetype. I'm not talking, like, just him specifically. Okay. But, that, that I mean, people are quick to judge out and rule out introverts, but it's like, no, I, that's, that, that's one of those people that just seems like there's more there. They're just not as expressive as some other people are. You know, I, I completely agree with that. I think that, some, I think that people nowadays are too um, – it's, it's like the same, don't judge a book by its cover. People are too judgmental with uh, like the first 
um, I don't want to, I don't know, I can't think of like the word for it, but they're, uh, like the first interaction you have with somebody is like basically how you judge them. Um, and I, I think that that goes like a really long way of like holding yourself from doing that because I think that can keep you from uh, like really knowing somebody and like like going off like that introvert type. Like I'm kind of like that myself, whereas it might take me a little bit to warm up to somebody, say like a large group of people. I have sometimes like really struggle with uh, finding my groove and like where I want to talk and like what I want to talk about. So I can be really reserved. So I totally understand how like somebody might get the completely wrong imp impersonation of like who I am or what I like to do as like a person from the first conversation I have because it might be a little awkward and I might not express everything about myself. Absolutely. Sometimes you might be unintentionally standoffish or yeah. I don't know. It just people people come up with a lot of very strong opinions, like oh, m more strong than they necessarily should be, mm -hmm. but just in like snap judgments of how you how you decided to dress that day. Yeah. Like right now, I feel like we, we were talking about like your outfit before the before the podcast, and you, yes. like you got like an athletic look to you right now versus if you came and I I just met you in this outfit in comparison to like a mm -hmm. suit, I'd be like, oh, that guy's ambitious. Yeah. Or like, I'd be like, instead of, oh, that guy's a gym rat. Yeah. Or that guy's in great physical condition or something like that. It's weird how first impressions are so huge in today's society. Cause like, I don't really wear this a lot. Like I actually put a lot of thought into what I was gonna wear here. Cause I actually was gonna like text you and be like, yo, are we gonna dress up for this? Are we just gonna like be chill about it? And I, I, I was gonna wear like khakis and like a little button up uh-huh it just to like put the more uh, professional vibe out there so that's kind of interesting to say that that's funny that's funny but that, that's interesting that you thought about how you wanted to present yourself yeah. like considering like we're on camera right now yeah. and whatnot i i always do that it's a uh, i think that's a pr maybe i maybe i think too much about stuff like that and i put too much thought into it about how i like to present myself but i think that's uh i think that's a pretty huge aspect of life is like how you like to present yourself because it alters perception of you for sure for sure yeah that can that can definitely be huge it's weird how uh i was listening to this this talk on instagram the other day with this dude named jay shetty and he said okay. something i really liked and it was basically we are living inside of a, a perception of a perception okay. I, th I think that's right All but right. pretty much what he was getting at is I live in with I live within a perception of what you what I think so my perception of what I think your perception is about me. Okay. And that's okay. really interesting because we we kind of uh I don't know our confidence is based off that how we yeah. act, yeah. how we interact with that particular individual. Mm -hmm. That's how we how we conduct ourselves, our mannerisms. Yeah, I think that I think that can all like go back to confidence. And like how you, how you like to express like it, I th I think of it as like a personal energy that you're like giving off like, like the like the big con like the co big confident like guy stereotype like big puffed up chest like head up like just like taking in everything like totally like stern face like and then you've got like the total opposite where you're like looking at the ground hunched back like not like smiling type thing like you're kind of like uh kind of like breaking yourself off. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, both of those communicate a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going like, back to like communication, like how you like present yourself. So like I try and go with the more like the the confidence vibe, to more of like more for myself. Um, if you could talk like more, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like to the Absolutely. top of it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think I try and display like the more like uh, more of like the confident vibe for. I want to say myself, but maybe it's. Maybe it's not like go back to how you you are like the, what, say the thing about like how other people perceive you or so like you you are living within a perception my perception I'm living within the perception of how I think you perceive me okay yeah and then that will dictate to some degree how I present myself conduct myself my mannerisms okay that that kind of makes sense it's interesting it's a weird thought to ponder. Yeah, I, I'm trying to, like, think about it, but not too hard to where it's, like, totally taking all of my energy and my thoughts into it. It's like, just silence for the next 30 seconds. <laughs> We're just, and you're just like, yeah, and yeah, yeah. I, 
I like that. I like that thought. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, that's not what, what is this confidence? What do you think that is? Like, it, you know, like everybody throws around the word, but I feel like everybody has like, it's kind of an ambiguous word. Like everybody's got their own interpretation of like what the fuck confidence even is. It's got to be energy. It's, it's got to be energy. It's, I, I think, I, I think I notice it a lot. Like when I enter the gym, so going into the gym with like a huge amount of confidence, I think of that as like energy. So going into the gym and having like this massive amount of energy and this big confidence, if you want to say it, and like everybody notices when you're coming into the room like mm. it's just like you're everybody's like drawn to this guy or like this person this figure and they're just like this big energy in the room and like everybody wants to see what they're doing or like what like the ty- type of things that like they're doing compared to like them i i really do think of confidence as like an energy and because like you can i can I can see in other people who like have more confidence in themselves than others just by like how they even like to express their thoughts and their ideas mm. and like just how they walk. It's really weird. Like I, uh, I, c- I kind of think of myself as like, uh, not like an empath, but like somebody who like really can perceive like people's feelings very well. Mm. And so like, I think very I, intuitive. Yeah. I think I can just like really, I think I can just intuitively, intuitively see like confidence in other people and in myself. And like, if I can tell that I am not as confident, I can personally, like I can physically exert more confidence. Do you know, does that make sense? Yeah. it almost, it, it seems, and I would agree with this. It's, it's almost as if your description of confidence is like in constant flux. Yes, absolutely. And I, I mean, I, I'll wake up some days and I'll just feel shitty. Yeah. No, no. no and no. then, later on in the day i'm feeling on top of the world yeah usually it takes me uh like my walk to class is where like i build up a lot of my confidence Mm. so like walking like just walking to class and like going through like all these people like going through national and like these big streets i can be build up a lot of anxiety so i try and like shut everything out and just like tune into what i'm doing and i try and I, i do that in like a lot of situations where i I think of it as like a garbage can, like a garbage disposal, and I take everything and I go black and just sh- pull everything into it and just focus on like what I'm doing. And so like I think that can like, I think that really like, it just like puts me into this ma- like this weird crazy focus that I've like just like come into, like come into grips with like the last like maybe like five six months. Mm. So it's just been really interesting, and like I, I apply that to everything, like whether it's like my school or like walking or like the gym or anything where I feel like a low confidence or like not as much, uh, like energy. Yeah. Not as much energy with myself. I like shut everything out and I just drive into this one particular point. So it's almost like a a state of consciousness or like a type of focus. Yes. Like a drive. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is interesting. And I, and they say that like you, uh, like they say like working out and like doing things like that where you're like working on your, personal self they say that like that increases like your confidence so that might go back to that same that same sort of uh topic i've I've, I've always thought just endorphins wise like mentally i feel right for example last weekend i didn't work out on friday and i work out on saturday okay and then i was feeling kind of down on sunday okay yeah yeah. and and then i went in and i I should have been more Mm self-aware but on sunday night i went i hit the gym and i left and i was like that's why I feel like that's why I felt the way I felt on Sunday. Like I didn't feel it too much on Friday and Saturday, but I really felt it on Sunday to where I felt like lethargic and like just kind of drawn down and I low energy. And literally apply that to my yesterday. Um, I after I shut my shoulder down for one day, the whole day, even when I was studying, I was like, man, this hurts. But I want to go to the fucking gym mm. and like I just want to be there in like these other people's like presence. Does that make sense? Like the energy that like I draw from the gym is like something I use every day. Like whether I'm like working out or not, I was just, like, maybe, maybe I just go to the gym and just like walk around the track or something, which is like that vibe. Like even like, if you don't do anything productive yourself, yeah, I just wanted to be there. And that was, th- that was the, w- I have not, I've never felt that before. Even like some days where I have like my off days or like some days I go on like vacation, whatever. But like, that was the first day where I was like, man, I want to fucking be there really bad and just so, to be there yeah just to be there and like my whole focus was off my entire focus for the whole day was off and like that's the only thing that i thought about which is really weird that is really interesting 
What do you think it is? That kind of productivity or or just, I, I think just like-minded was, people or just the, the vibe of the gym or your associations with past good workouts and how you left feeling afterwards? All the above. Even like uh, adding in the, the social aspect. I, uh, I really like to go to the gym to talk to friends. So like when I see like you or I see like some of my other buddies like Sean or guys I work with, I'm like, man, hell yeah. I see my buddy from work. I'm like, man, that just totally uplifts you. And That's like, a good point too, because I mean, if you run into other people on campus or just out and about, mm-hmm. if you run into one of your friends at Walmart, they may not they may not be in as good of a mood in comparison mm-hmm. to the gym. Like everybody's always yeah. in a good mood at the gym. It's always really positive energy there. Absolutely, it's a it's a really awesome feeling to like walk in the gym and know that like everybody's on the same mindset, the same goal of like bettering themselves and just just overall just being better mm. and so I, I think that's a really kick-ass uh that's a really kick-ass energy to have that's I cool i think that's really important the weird thing too about um whenever you feel that lack of energy mm-hmm. you're more receptive to negativity at least me like i, I yes. d- something i'm i'm self-aware of but i'm not incredible at like blocking the negative thoughts out okay and it's really interesting because last night i was in like kind of a negative mood because uh, honestly, I, I uploaded a podcast with these two girls, and mm-hmm. one of the girls, like, we didn't even have, like, a bad falling out. Like, I have nothing bad to say about her, but mm-hmm. long story short, this girl was saying she's going to report my YouTube channel, and she was just saying all this petty shit because she didn't want, for whatever reason, I still don't know why, and for whatever reason, she decided to do a podcast with me, and then she's like, no, don't upload it. And I, I don't know what it was. That is I, interesting. I don't know, because she was... I don't want to go too deep on this, but basically, I I think she was kind of upset because we were seeing each other for a few months, and then she, I think she was kind of interested in something more Mm -hmm. than what I was interested in. Absolutely. And I think she was upset about that, so she saw her only leverage in this is like, I'm going to report your YouTube channel because of this, or I I have no idea. I have no idea. I had a point that I brought that up for, though. Um, Let's lethargicity oh oh so i was i was really negative last yeah, night negative, yeah. and i was really upset about this i'm like like why are you being so petty blah blah mm-hmm. blah and was i had a friend this, like, over you were having like internally yeah well i was i had a friend over and i was being okay. negative with her as well i was like okay. i was like this is fucking stupid like they're just being petty like yeah. i have no idea why they're being this way yeah and then then she kind of like strayed the conversation back towards me talking about things that i'm passionate about and things that I like good things that I have going on at this point in time like right now yeah good on her for that and it was really interesting seeing that because she said it after she's like see how see how much more positive you are after like talking about these things Mm -hmm. and it's crazy man like you just focus your attention away from something that's making you negative yes and this is this is you got to be like very conscious of this like hyper aware aware. constantly yeah (laughs) jinx (laughs) <laughs> but uh yeah we yeah it was really interesting how i was going down this negative train and then she intentionally brought me back to like mm-hmm. talking about what i was positive about yeah and then i i shifted that focus towards something that gives me like positive energy yes and tony robbins say what you want about the guy i think he's awesome Tony Robbins. he has a quote that i love and it's and i, I love it even more after that experience of last night but where focus goes, energy flows. Yes. And he always applies that to like negative thoughts or positive thoughts. Mm-hmm. Cause I, I think I have this, this thing to where I, I kind of hyper focus on things yes, and it's absolutely. really positive and it's really negative okay. on both, like both spectrums. Yeah, both spe- okay. Yeah. De- depending on what you're doing. Yeah. I totally, totally agree. 100%. Um, c- going back to the, uh, like the, your, your, the positivity flows where, uh, where, where focus flows or where, where focus goes, energy flows. Yes. So I uh, I started to notice that a little bit ago, maybe like a year ago. I really started to notice like how I'm feeling is how I will perceive things or how I will uh, how I will like talk or like how I will speak to people or something like that. So I started to notice that, and I started to change things like actually how I think about things. So like when I wake up, if there's something like. I'm I'm kind of a, I'm a really clean meticulous person. So like whenever I wake up and the kitchen's like destroyed, it's kind of hard for me to be like, man, I just spent all this time cleaning it. So now I'm like, man, okay. So I just have to like try and put that out of mind and just be like, okay. So let's just like try and think of the, like the positives. And so like 
sometimes that can be really hard to like get yourself out of that that negative spiral so i always especially if you're not aware of it yeah where it's starting to go you know i I can't say that I don't I, I can't say that I agree with that because I don't feel that I, I if I'm ever like sensing that I'm getting towards a negative path I can always tell like right away or if like I'm getting like frustrated I usually try and shut it down really quickly um, and just try and like steer it in any other possible way like I used to be a really frustrated person all the time all the fucking time I was frustrated so then I was just like it was a, it was a long battle just like letting letting stuff go just like letting like small stuff go like anything literally like the dumbest stuff and so just like focusing more on the, like the positive aspects and things that are going well and stuff like that and i think that's had a profound impact in how i go throughout like my daily life mm. that's really that, that's awesome that you have the awareness of that negative emotion or positive emotion and then learning how to counteract it if it's going somewhere you don't want to i think that's because of the like experience i have like like a lot of like family members like a lot of my family members are like just ultimately negative people so i think that just by having that uh in like that environmental uh not example but like that experience of like seeing like these people like constantly negative i i would always like be around them so i'm like okay so let's try and think of the positives i would never like say that but internally i was always thinking that especially with like loved ones so i'm like i can't i can't tell them to stop being negative but i would do that same aversion tactic like your friend did and so i think i have always been i've been like kind of like training myself through other people so then whenever it would happen to myself i knew what to do does does that make sense to an extent yeah yeah i'd say so so like learning how to counteract it yeah and how to how to shift that focus yeah towards a more positive uh i guess uh more like a train of thoughts yeah absolutely more positive train of thoughts and so like i just think that's something that i have i've gained a lot of experience with throughout like my young life that's impressive that's impressive because i know personally that's something i would like to improve upon what's that uh, just j- mainly the negative because yeah okay I would say at least at least once a day and I'd say at least once a day I start going down a negative route absolutely and then I've I've gotten better but I'm not nearly where I want to be with like being okay. able to identify it in that moment mm-hmm. at least at least in the middle or like in the ideally in the beginning whenever it starts to get kind of negative and then mm-hmm. redirect my focus, like shift it towards something else. Yeah. And like what I'm like looking forward to, like, for example, today, like I was sitting in class and I was like, this class is so boring. This teacher, it's just like, it, it, honestly, it's a really slow paced class and I'm just, I'm just kind of bored of it. And I'm also, I'm like, damn, I'm ready to graduate. I just want to get out of here. I'm tired of school. Mm-hmm. Cause like the lack of enthusiasm I have for school has just always really been a lot on me. Like just, yeah. I'm just talking subjectively and personally speaking. Okay. But then I was, and then I, I did start to think, I'm like, well, after I get out of this class, I'm going to have a great day. I'm about to work out with Avery and then we're going to do a podcast. So like, it's, yeah. it's going to be a good day. So I was like, I, I did shift it, but not as much as I would have liked. Absolutely. I, uh, Okay, so I want to I want to go back to like what you were talking about in class. So you're saying how it was uh like it felt like it was like drudging on forever. Do you do you know how uh, like they say like t- uh, time flies when you're having fun? Mm-hmm. Going into like that like energy flow, right? So like I I think about that in some classes too because like I I always have everybody has classes where they're going through and they're just like drudging through, and so I I maybe I was reading a reading something or I was watching some video and somebody was talking about like energy flow like the flow of time and so like how if uh if a task is not demanding enough then you're bored and you are thinking about your next task or if something is too engaging then it brings like stress and anxiety but you got you got to like find that like right middle ground and so i think that uh it's really so i i find i noticed this with my calculus class because it can be uh sometimes it can be so overstimulating that it takes me out of the moment and it take and it like overwhelming me. yeah and so things like drudge on even longer like it makes like the 50 minute class seem like hours and hours because like 
you're just like you're so overstimulated and so you get like this like weird anxiety and so like everything is just like so much slower and so i try and think about like like that energy flow and going back to that and trying to like calm everything down mm. and so like going back to like, say like boring stuff trying to make sure that you are uh i try and like over engage myself if i find myself really bored like sleeping in class so i'll like really pay attention to what the teacher's saying also like writing stuff down to like try and get back to that energy flow where time like is like moving a lot faster throughout those like really boring classes mm. so i think that's like really hard to do it's difficult it's uh that's definitely got to be like a like a a skill to have almost like an art yeah that's like that's a good way to put it getting like fully engaged yeah that's interesting that's interesting Everybody kind of has their own techniques and strategies mm-hmm. and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I spe- specifically, this uh, agriculture class I'm in is horribly boring. So bad. But, and like lately, it's been like the past couple weeks, I will be literally falling asleep in class. And I actually had this uh, one of my classes the other day. It was late in the afternoon throughout like the entire day. I was like, I was kind of tired. So I walk into this class and I was fully engaged. Maybe 15 minutes in, I was zonked. I was passed out. And, like, do you ever find yourself, like, in those situations where, like, you cannot keep yourself awake no matter I did, what? I've only fallen asleep a few times in class, and I did no yesterday. Way. Literally yesterday, I fell asleep. Oh, my gosh. I was just out, and I woke up 30 minutes later, and I checked the time. I'm like, wow, I literally just slept. It's Had cool. a dream and everything. Like, yeah. I, felt, I felt a lot better whenever I woke up. Really? Yeah. Like, more focused and whatnot. Maybe, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not the, like the big nap guy, so maybe, maybe I should take a little more naps. I don't know. I was just like that, that stasis, like that, but boredom is horrible. I hate that. That's not, that's gotta be like the worst that thing ever. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, um, read in a book one time that apparently if you sleep six hours at night and then take a one hour nap during the day, okay. I don't know if there's any scientific backing mm-hmm. for this, but then apparently you will be able to be like you're it's pretty much trying to like life hack like a little life hack so that you can cut mm-hmm. one hour off of your sleep and then you get an extra hour out of your day basically that's fair that's fair i've been having a really hard time finding like my happy medium with my sleep schedule because it's been super bad this semester like depending on whatever i'm doing it's like i've been i've been more on like the six hour the six hour sleep schedule six to seven with like that little 30 to an hour minute nap okay and it's been it's been kind of cool. I've, uh, I haven't felt as like tired throughout my day. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I absolutely. Like that being like lethargic. So I think, I think that hour map might be, uh, a lot more important than you may think. Part of me wishes we could go back to whenever, whenever it was, mm-hmm. I, I, I think this is a Twitter fact I read, but pretty much sleeping four hours a night. Have you ever heard that four hours a night and then sleeping four hours during the day? Okay. That's like apparently how our ancestors lived. Yeah, the the nomadic uh, lifestyle, which is interesting. It is. It definitely. It definitely is interesting. Um, I think that also can go back to like nutrition. Mm. Um, I don't. I think maybe they were sleeping in like more blocks. Maybe like a, a combination of things like safety, um, and like not having like a good place to sleep. Like you're sleeping on rocks and dirt and stuff. So I, I don't think you're getting like sound sleeps. And then third, like nutrition, whereas you, I don't think you'd be like as, I think you'd be like mentally out of it, like not having like the right nut- nutrients and it's like so and so forth. So like you're getting like these micro sleeps and then like you're waking. <laughs> like that was kind of scary me a little bit. And then like you might not be uh, as like as into it. I don't, I don't know. I can't think of like the right way to, to phrase what I'm trying to say, but maybe maybe their sleep schedule had a little bit more to do with like their everyday life okay rather than like what would be best for your sleep schedule absolutely okay and that's how they adapted and whatnot yeah yeah i wonder i wonder because that's definitely i mean i feel like it's a cultural thing at least now why we sleep eight hours a night Mm -hmm. but also it doesn't make sense that i don't know most other things like most other creatures they sleep just one prolonged period at night or during the day Mm -hmm. and then they wake up during the day and then they go at it yeah i don't i don't really have any knowledge on how any other animals like sleep 
so I can't really. I can't Apparently, really. dolphins sleep with half of their brain on. Like you know what? One like the left hemisphere will stay on, and then the other, the right sleeps, which is crazy. I think that is okay. So when okay, so going back to like the uh, like ancient like civilizations and tribes and so on, they they didn't have REM sleep. So okay, okay, you know what? That's what I was trying to get to. So those block four hour sleeps, mm-hmm. they're not getting that REM sleep, because so okay, so it's also on the same fact if like you. If you smoke weed before you go to bed, it, it kind of is like putting a sheath over your brain. It's like a protective sheath, right? So your it your brain thinks it's in this uh, this in this area where it's not safe, right? So mm. it's like t- it's like technically not asleep, but it's like asleep. So it's in like this uh, protective mode to where like you can be woken up very easily. So like the back in the day, they would go into REM sleep, whereas if there was like somebody gonna attack their their uh, civilization or like there was animals and they were going to like get harmed or whatever. I think that, I think that's the same thing with dolphins in the ocean where they always have to be uh, like uh, hyper aware, alert, alert. Yes. That's a perfect way to put it. They have to be alert of their surroundings and their situation because they could always be uh, put in danger. So they have to be able to shock themselves out of sleep, I think. So they could wake up to like full consciousness and yeah. ca- in case they need to have flight or flight or something like that. Yeah. Cause if you ever notice if you get woken up, in the middle of your sleep and you're super just you're kind of like out of it and you dazed help. you're in REM sleep so it takes you a little while to get back into it as far as humans go how what what is the REM sleep cycle I always heard it was like two hours you know like they're like the I think it's five stages it's of about, sleep it's, it's like every three hours so three hours okay it's like, it's, like, it's like right every three hours so that's why they try and do the six hour sleeps right so you it's okay so it's like a third of your sleep it's like it's something with like a third or a th- like three hours like into your sleep. It's something with like that three, mm. but it's like at the end of your sleep and it's like this short burst. Uh, and so I think that's why they try and do like the, the six hour sleeps because you're getting like two REM sleeps. Okay. Cause like you'll go through like these peaks and valleys in your sleep. And so I, I, I that's gotta be, that's gotta be like, s- that's, that's gotta be. Sleep is extremely interesting. Yeah. It's, it's so weird. It's really weird. I always try and watch some videos on, uh, like, people trying to like, understand sleep or, like, perceive, like, why we dream or whatever. And that's always really cool. It's so interpretive. Like, yeah. the entire science behind it, it's so interpretive. Oh, yeah. Even, like, some people say that, uh, like, what you're dreaming is uh, the exact – It's it's, like, how your ego or your id is, like, perceiving reality or, like – your subconscious like overlays of like what you want to be happening in your life or like what's affecting you. Oh wow. Yeah. It's, so, so why did my parents die last night? Really? No, like it, like no, in my no, dream. No, no, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, that's no. really weird. No, no, that didn't happen. Oh okay. No, actually, I did wake up. I woke up crying, which is weird. How much you feel your dreams emotionally? Yes. You so know. interconnected. It but is. but I yeah I woke up crying the other night to my grandparents no. passing away. No way. So it's almost like. I don't know. It's like I'm like anticipating their death, or maybe maybe myself feeling guilty because I don't really call them as much as I probably should, yeah. considering how close we are. But yeah. Do you think it could possibly have something to do with, uh, like, say, say like you're going to go to bed like super anxious or like upset? Do you think that would have like a big impact on like how you're dreaming, and like the dreams that you have? Wait, so ask that again. Um, so. You said if I go to bed upset? The mental state that you go to bed in, do Uh you think that maybe has an effect on, like, how you dream? I bet so. I would say so just because the last 10 minutes of waking consciousness, whenever Mm -hmm. I shift into, like, a dream state, Mm -hmm. I usually dream about something I thought about in the last 10 minutes. I've been trying to do that lately. Really? It's like... Almost, like, almost kind of lucid dream by attempting to, like, manipulate your thoughts right Mm -hmm. before. Yeah. They say they say that you do something like that, like whereas like the the thoughts that you have and perceive going into uh, like a sleep is like something that your your brain like kind of like is still like stuck up on or something like that. So mm. it just like just like spins on that topic maybe because I know like okay so um, going to okay if you go to sleep listening to like a certain like type of music that like affects your like the dreams that you have. So okay. I think that might also play back to like your mood. That is weird. Yeah. Like, if, okay. So I, I can specifically s- say this. Okay. So, um, 
I was having some really difficult times last semester, like through Christmas, right? So I was going to bed in these very upset states, like where they'd be really mad and really sad. Okay. okay. So my dreams were direct uh, reflections of how I was feeling. So like my dreams were directly affected by my mood going into them. Interesting. So like they would be specifically about like that topic that I was like really upset about and like really frustrated with. And I would, it was like, like a span of about a week where I was having like these really deep, it felt like lucid dreams, but I, I don't think they were cause I wasn't as hyper, like I, I wasn't as active as I, I should have been in a lucid dream, but it was really, it was really unique, like how vivid and how deep the, even the feelings were in my dream, how close they were to reality. Wow. That's the weird part about dreams too, is they, they almost solve your problems for you. Like the expression, yeah, just go sleep on it, go sleep on it. Like there's some truth in that, honestly. Yeah. Have you ever, have you ever gone to like, did any of those nights that you went to bed upset? Did you ever wake up feeling a lot better? Uh, no, no, never. I would always wake up probably worse than I went to probably more safe than I went to bed. Really? Yeah. That's surprising to me. But I, I would, so m my, uh, my brother's really big into uh, kind of like a, like Buddhist, uh, like Buddhist monk type, uh, philosophy. Right. So I would, I w I always go to my brother for advice always. He's a couple years older than me. I feel like he has just like a little more experience and stuff with reality. So I go to him with like stuff like this and he would, he would try and explain to me how like, kind of like how I was saying earlier, like your dreams are like reflections of what you want to happen. So these dreams that I were, I was having were direct reflections of like what I wanted, but could not have. Interesting. That was just like really weird. I've never thought of dreams to be like that. Really? That's really interesting, man. I've had some pretty fucking wacky dreams the past couple months. So like, what would it, what would a nightmare be then? Would a nightmare be, like I said with my grandparents, like waking up to your grandparents or a significant loved one passed away? Um, like, how do you explain those if, if, if dreams are something you kind of want to happen? Or is that just a version of dreams? I think I, I wouldn't say that all dreams are versions of what you want to happen. I just think that under extreme intense like feelings that those might be amplified. Oh. I think that's more of what I'm trying to say is like, I think that these strong feelings can amplify the dreams rather than like their direct reflections. Interesting. Rather than like a mirror, it might be like, might just be like different pathways of like things that you could dream about. Cause like, that's something we don't even know about. It's like, we don't fully understand dreaming. So like not at all, not literally not at all. So like it's so much stuff could be going on that we have no idea. And we, we know that we need it. Yeah. So you go without it, you go crazy. Yeah. What is it like six or seven days without sleep? And you, I think, okay. So after, after like 50 or 60 hours, you start to have micro sleeps. Actually, it's about 30 hours, 30 to 36 hours. You start to have micro sleeps. It's like a day and a half. Yeah. Not so even day and a half to like barely two days. You start. What, what are micro sleeps? Have you ever gone like really like suspended periods without sleeping? I've never gone 30 it's hours, no. It's fucking wild. It really? really is crazy. After about 50 hours, you start to hallucinate. Wow. It's crazy. After about 50 to 60, you start to hallucinate. 70 to 80, you really start to break down. Like emotionally, or what do you mean everything, by breakdown? Everything starts crashing down. Like, you are losing your fucking mind. At about six days, you die. Wow. Six to seven days without just sleep, collapse. you die. You just die. Okay, so micro sleeps. Um, I know paranoia is also a really common response too. Yeah, that's that's within the that's within the micro sleeps to the hallucination stage is okay. the paranoia. So um, micro sleeps. Let me. Yeah, I have a really hard time with trying to stay on focus sometimes. Now you're cool. So micro sleeps. Um, it's basically like your body is trying to shut itself down because you're tr depriving it of that sleep, right? So. Say, uh, I while, uh, while in a waking state, yes, what the fuck, specifically in a waking state. Um, I noticed this one time I was driving, um, I was driving throughout the city, I was picking up one of my friends from like a night out or whatever, and uh, I was coming off of this massive binge of studying. I had like finished a test that day, so I was on like I think I was on hour like 32, <sighs> of, like no sleep. Um, 
and like I think we were going back like I was probably about to go like to sleep maybe imminently so I was at this I was I was pulling up the stop sign and I closed my eyes nobody was around me and then I come back up and the stop sign was full it was fucking weird and it wait what do you mean the stop sign was full like my body shut itself down I went into like a micro sleep for how long a couple seconds what? But it happens a lot. It re- reoccurs. Like as the time length increases, the micro sleeps increase at, like in in frequency and in duration. So, I, I it, when we got back to his house, we were just kind of hanging out, doing whatever. Um, I was on the couch, and I was literally like shuttling back and forth between consciousness and sleep, back and forth, like without any sort of help, like. I, I have no idea how to explain it. It was just that, like, I was asleep and awake at, like, the exact same time. It was... Like, you weren't, you were intentionally trying to be awake, I was trying it, to be awake. Your body's just shifting you my back and forth. My body is literally, like, it's like, I'm, I'm opening my eyelids, and my brain is going, like, turn off the light. And I, then it goes... And then you go back up, and then your brain's like, shut the shit down, kid. It's like, it's literally like, shut all systems down. Do you think you were fighting it? Yeah, or was it no, just no, doing absolutely. absolutely oh wow yeah no and I, I don't know if it's just me or whatever but like whenever i fight sleep it comes harder so like whenever like you're trying, it's like i'm gonna win yeah, i'm gonna win the sleep always wins <laughs> it's kind of like uh it's like do you ever get like kind of uh like road tired do you ever get that what do you mean i i feel like this happens in like some people and not others like uh at night if i get even the slight bit like the slight bit tired I have to do something about it, whether that be get out of the car, stop, get a drink, something. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It will yeah. Get really bad. Absolutely. And like, and then it'll get to a point where like I'll like shut down. I'm like, fuck, that could have been actually detrimental to my health. So like that, that it's like the same thing. Those like little micro sleeps, and it's like your brain trying to shut off that light, but you're like trying to keep it awake, and it's like you're fighting something that's gonna win overall. Like it's inevitable. It's inevitable, or you die. Yes. Those are the two outcomes. Yep. <laughs> yep. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, I've never tried resisting it too much. I'm, I'm just kind of like, I'm very submissive when it comes to sleep. I'm like, yo, I gotta sleep. I'm gonna pass out right now. Yeah, dude, I'm huge on sleep too. But sometimes I just do it just to like, just to like kind of. I'm, I'm, I'm a big like, uh, research by like, actual like research by doing it. Yeah. I, I, can't, I can't think of like the right uh, experience. Place. Yes. But like that's awesome. Learning something through experience is huge because like, I maybe I'm just ignorant and like I'm kind of annoying in that fact. But like if somebody tells me something, I don't believe it and I have to go figure it out. For Hyper myself. curious. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. Yeah, right. It's like uh, if you, um, like, I don't know. I, I can't think of like a specific example. But like I just always feel like if somebody tells me something to not do. Like I'm gonna go see if like it'll actually do that to me if it'll hurt me i think that's part of being a guy i'm the same way like i'm so stubborn it's like tell me i won't yeah tell me i won't i dare you tell me i won't yeah watch me watch (laughs) me bitch watch me go do exactly what you just did and fuck it up the exact same (laughs) worse and then sometimes your motive to do it is 100 percent because they told you not to or that you should it or that you can't or you can't do something absolutely telling somebody they cannot do something is possibly the strongest motivation you can give somebody yeah right that's pretty fucking powerful that's Unless they believe it. Yeah. Abs- I mean, I, fuck, I'm a chemistry major, and my high school chemistry teacher told me that I would never be good at chemistry. So now you're like. I think I'm a chemistry bro. major just to spite the guy. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm genuinely interested in it, but, like, I, I think there's got to be some, like, subconscious overlay where it's like, you have to be fucking good at this. You but should. Like, that's a strong motivator. You should definitely go back to your old high school with that degree. Yeah, and go back and be like, hey, fuck you. Yeah, fuck you. Here's my shit. Yeah, you see that? It says chemistry on there. And then he's he's like the type of guy to be like, I said that to motivate you. I'm like, no, you said that because you're a prick. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I feel like a lot of people, like like rappers and whatnot, I know Jake Paul's this way, but they'll talk about their old high school teachers okay. and how they how they get motivated by them telling them they can't do something. And that, that never happened to me. Like, no high school teacher was ever like, hey, you, right over there. Come, yeah, come here. <laughs> come here. <laughs> I just wanted to say, like, do you have any goals in life? I'm like, yeah, yeah. yeah I, got, I want to do all this cool shit. Yeah, I got, I got some cool shit on my mind. I'd like to do, you know. Why, why do you ask? Uh, I'm, I'm really excited about like my future ambitions. By the way, uh-uh. you can't do that. 
Yeah. Yep. Uh, what? Shut what? It, shut it down at the young age is I think that's what it is. Is like trying to shut it down at like that young age and like I think that's what makes it worse is like going through like that uh that teenage that teenage phase where like it's like the same thing. Tell me I won't do it. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell me I can't do it and I do it even more. The it's resentment. Hey, I'm in my I'm teacher, I'm in my rebellious years right now. Yeah, why yeah. why are you telling me <laughs> I can't the do rebellious that? Years, yes, <laughs> I'm, I'm very rebellious at this point of my life. <laughs> Don't you know what I am right now? <laughs> Don't you know I'm supposed to be that guy? I'm a 15-year-old like, boy. Like, what, what are you telling me? I can't do that. Yeah, absolutely. That's a that's a funny thing. That's hilarious. That's funny. And it's weird how like everybody, like all guys are like that. My and parents didn't even try. My parents gave up telling me what I could and couldn't do. Literally, my mom did too. Yeah, and it it, it worked out better. Like I'd stayed out to like three in the morning back yep. in high school. Like mm -hmm. I didn't go like super crazy in high school. I mean, I did sometimes, but. But overall, I don't know. Was, I think it was a really good choice on my parents' part because if they had told me I couldn't do something, I was going to do it, and oh, I don't yeah. give a shit what they have to say. Yeah. Go, okay, so going back to that, my uh, I used to have this uh, this door in my basement. It was a sliding door. And eventually, they, they at first, they would put up cameras, right, to be like, we know you're fucking leaving. And I'm like, I, yeah, I see the camera. I know I'm going to leave anyway. And then it just got to the point where like they'd put like a block on the door, and then like it, sometimes it wouldn't get put back in. Eventually, they got to the point where they're like, just put the stick back in the door. <laughs> it got like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. They're like they just stopped giving a fuck that we were leaving, and they're just like, just put the brick back in the just door. Just make sure it's locked, please. Literally, and they're like, I don't. At this point, we're not gonna stop you. You're finding new, innovative ways to get out of the house. <laughs> just we're it, actually kind of impressed. You, you and your father are. Yeah, me and your father are very impressed with and your yeah. innovation. Stopped using the camera, so on and so forth. And they're just like, all right, just make sure the house is locked. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and it's weird because I don't know if you were like this. I think that I went out more and stayed out longer in high school than I do in college. Possibly. Possibly. I, I was definitely um, more exploratory in some ways. Mm -hmm. Some ways in college as well. But I agree. I agree. Like when I, I will say I whenever I did drink I went crazy in high school at least that's how I remember it. I didn't really drink in high school. Really, I've never been that kind of guy. Okay. I I really don't drink a lot, and so I think I, that's kind of weird because like, as somebody who like doesn't drink and like living with people who drink a lot, they get like really confused that I don't like to drink, which is we the weirdest thing ever. That is interesting. Like they're like my 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 roommates go out a lot and they go out a shit ton. And maybe I go out a tenth as much as they do. And so they're like, bro, why don't you want to go out? Why don't you want to come get, like, drunk? We're not even, like, going out. We're just, like, hanging out. I'm just like, that's not, not really my thing. Like, I'll go and, like, hang out with them, and I won't drink. And they're like, why? Are you weird? Mm -hmm. I'm like, I, I don't know. That's just not my it's not my style. I like that. I like that. Because drinking all the time, it's not sustainable. Yeah, absolutely. Like I, I, like, I was telling you tonight, I went out last Thursday, and I felt terrible all day Friday. So I was like, you know what? I'm not doing like I'm not doing the whole party thing for just a few more like probably I it, honestly I'm not gonna do like drink or anything until uh, next weekend, mm -hmm. which is uh, my friend's wedding. So I was like, I'll just wait till then. Badass, I love weddings. Um, oh fuck, what was I gonna say? Um, lost my train of thought. Do you care if I take a piss real quick? No, nah, cool. I'm gonna run. Oh, excuse me. I don't, I don't think you even heard that or saw that, but I had to <laughs> let up some fumes in the stomach or something. Hey, no worries. I'll but, think about yeah, I'm going to run to the bathroom, and I'll be right back. Okay, sounds good. I usually don't go to the bathroom in the middle, but... Really? Yeah, I, I, I mean, you saw me pee twice in the ten minutes that we were here before. Yeah, were you sucking down water at the gym?
glad I thought. And we about, back. I'm glad I, re, uh, I figured out what I was trying to say. Oh, you remembered? Yeah, it was about. Yeah, well, it was about cool, cool. Is there like a specific like? Is there a right or a left on this? Ah, uh, not necessarily. I can't no. One I had, I was just really comfortable. And I'm gonna try and figure that out. That's probably the best way, cause I always tell people to avoid putting it across your body like a seatbelt, because then it's it kind of gets tangled up and whatnot. Totally agree. I'm I'm really weird with like uh like things on my body. Like you wanna pull that up a little closer? Yeah, absolutely. I'll move forward. I'm really weird with like, especially like clothes and like my backpack. I'm constantly like fidgeting. Yeah. Like on like how things like feel on me. So if, if you ever notice me just like sitting like fuck with this for a minute, it's like something. I don't know why stuff like that bugs me. It's, it's like, comfort. Yeah, maybe, maybe that gotta be something like that. Okay, so going back to the uh, like drinking on a night out or whatever, I. I will never drink the night before I have shit to do the next day. Like Smart. I, I, it's just like I don't like to wake up and be hungover and then having to be responsible. Absolutely. Because like I don't feel dependable, and like I also don't like to feel like shit when I have to do something like responsible. The amount of output too, you know, like the the outcome of how much work you're putting in, it's not nearly as productive. Yeah. You know, I think that goes back to not wanting to half-ass something and always wanting to, like, put my best foot forward. So, like, I will never drink unless, I like, the next day I can just be a dog shit human being and just, like, stuff my face with fast food and just sit on the couch and be lethargic. Absolutely. Yeah, I I, I feel mentally delayed more than anything, too. I feel very, very really? sluggish, very just uh, – I feel like my brain's not working. Like, it literally feels like it's decaying. Really? Like yeah, after the, after the night out? Yeah, the day after. Really? That's I mean that's after like a pretty heavy night of drinking. That's fair. But after that's after fair. like a normal night I don't feel too much, but mm -hmm. I don't know, just just very very lazy. Mhm. Mm that's Are you a coffee guy? I like coffee. Yeah, I do are you like a religious morning coffee drinker? No. Really. Here and there. Here and there I like it. That's strange. I feel like anybody who likes I, you know what? Maybe maybe I I've never asked a girl this because, like, I typically girls are I, I don't want to say that as like a blanket statement, but I feel like not a lot of girls like wake up and are like, fuck, man, I need coffee. But I feel like a lot of guys are like that who drink coffee. Interesting. I see it the other way. Really? Just because of Starbucks. Yeah. OK, that that's actually really that's really fair. Um, I guess that's I guess that's like their way of doing it. It's weird that it's so I don't know. I associate Starbucks with females. No, absolutely. Like primarily. I don't know why that absolutely. is. I I, th I was thinking more along the lines of like uh, at home, at home brew, like waking mm. up and like immediately coming out of your door and be like, oh my god, and then going straight to the coffee pot. Okay, yeah. So I think every day for the last, I don't even know how long, maybe six years, I go from my bedroom to the coffee pot in a straight line. Do you think you're dependent on coffee to Absolutely. wake up? Absolutely. Really. Not dependent on coffee, but I think that I enjoy it far too much to not drink it. Mm. Like, I think, okay, so I drink my, I wake up maybe an hour and a half before I have to leave my house. I give myself like 45 minutes for like my sit down time and like ramping up like my brain activity and drinking my coffee. Mm. And like, I equate those two with peace and like low stimuli so i think that's like really even something that i create is that that peace and quiet in the morning to get myself going okay so i think that also might be like a probably a 60 40 more of the coffee like n really enjoying the coffee do you want to be more productive is that the end goal to be more productive uh, or just to wake yourself up i think it's more along the lines of getting myself mentally prepared for the day Okay. Um, cause like lately I've really come to like the realization that like nothing I do is going to help or like solve my anxiety, but there's so many things I can do to reduce them throughout my day. And that's the biggest one I've noticed is making sure that I'm mentally preparing myself for the day and everything I have to do that day and kind of like, uh, quantifying my responsibles, like, I'm not a list guy, but I keep everything like upstairs. So like same way. My my morning is basically like I plan out my day. I will plan out my day from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. when I'm drinking my coffee. 
Interesting. That's a really interesting morning ritual. I'm a hugely routine based guy. So I think that's like why it stems back to that. Like I am I am so ingrained in my routines that I will not stop them for anybody. Interesting, yeah. Nobody. It it's is not a bad thing. It's selfish in a way, but like that like forty five minutes is something like I dedicate to myself for like my overall and like mental health, physical health, like my overall personal improvement. Okay. Do you have like makes that, sense though? Do you have that time in your day where you just you you dedicate it to yourself to just sit and think, like th- reflection? Uh, it it could be what it could be whatever you want. Um, n- maybe it, it kind of along the lines of a, a meditation, but not necessarily. I don't know if it's distilled in every single part of my day, mm-hmm. like a ritual or a routine where mm-hmm. I do the same thing every single day. Okay, but. Yes, in the aspect that I'll sit and I'll ponder upon things going on in my life or ideas in my head or absolutely whatever it may be. But I, I definitely do the process of figuring out my day, like waking up and but even even the time I wake up is kind of arbitrary. So I kind of I'll wake up and then I kind of plan out my day or I'll plan it out the day before. OK, because like if I got I don't know if I wake up and I made plans for that night and then I got work in classes it's like okay i got a two-hour gap what do i want to do with that time okay and then if i wake up feeling kind of tired that morning it's like okay i'll, I'll play in that time to take a nap or i get that two hours I'll, I'll read or okay whatever it may be i'll watch tv that's fair that's very fair i uh, i have noticed that if i try to plan out my next day the day before it's overstimulating and i can't sleep interesting yeah. That happened to me the other night. That's really funny you say that. Yeah. Do you try and destimulize yourself like at night? Like do you do you have like clothes that you get into or like do you have like a like a place that you go and like chill and hang out at at night to try and uh kind of like resolve the daily issues or I'd say it's called my bed. Okay. <laughs> so do you, do you do you go yeah. do you go full from like run 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 to like bed? I kind of wind down. I'm usually hanging out with people at nighttime, and then I'll I'll kind of relax and then go to my bed and think about shit. Okay. And then do yeah, but I I feel like I'm pretty decent at turning it all off. Really. And then falling asleep within like ten twenty minutes. Yeah. Wow. Holy fuck. I Fortunately, could, sometimes it's not that way. Man, I could not imagine that. I have to. I have to literally start I have to think about winding down for bed maybe two hours before I go to bed mm. I do like my day like I don't know I don't know maybe it's just like me personally but like my day is so stimulating that like I'm on like go 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 so then when I get home I tune out everything and I will just try and like do my best to like shut all systems down and just like make peace with my day so that I can go into my bed because once I get into my bed if I don't have that clear slate I won't sleep that's interesting yeah so you have a you have a nighttime and a morning ritual uh, I, for different night, purposes the nighttime is very loose it's more along like how I'm feeling and like what I just want to do but the night but you intentionally wind yourself down yeah I have to I have to wow that's really interesting I yeah. have to try and like destimulate like destimulize like everything like lights are dim like i don't I, i'll read a lot on my phone i think reading helps me too is uh kind of relaxes you yeah i definitely have to get into that relaxed state reading makes me tired yeah it really absolutely. does oh yeah oh yeah i don't know why I'm not sure why but uh, whenever i will say whenever i i am having a hard time falling asleep i'll usually turn something on my phone really to kind of stimulate my brain it's super counterintuitive but to stimulate my brain so that I'm able to like fall asleep easier instead okay. of just letting my thoughts wander. Okay, that's fair. Like, it's usually like I, I turn a lot of like Jordan Peterson. Like the past year, that's been like my kind of go to. My past week has been a lot of Jordan Peterson. Interesting. It's Interesting. Been, it's been kind of cool. So do he's you, the man. He is the fucking man. Are you the kind of guy at night where you watch TV like in bed while you some nights, sleep? but majority of nights, no. Okay. Yeah, because like that's something that I noticed is that if there's a TV in my room, like, playing while I'm trying to go to sleep, 
not not a fucking chance. What it, what do you think it is for you? Do you think it's the screen or do you think it's the audio? Uh, I think it's just the stimulation in general. Like I'll listen all to of it. it. I'll, uh, lights don't affect me at all. Like when I'm going to sleep, but it's uh, noise. Mm. So I think it's like more along the lines of like I'm listening to something funny and I'm trying to sleep. Right. It'll, it'll all go in and I'm just like sitting and I'm thinking about it and I'm literally listening to the show as it is going and like I've seen the episode before of like something like say it's like American Dad or something I've seen the episode and I'm visualizing it as I'm hearing it mm. but I cannot see it so then I'm replaying it in my mind and I'm like this is entirely counterintuitive uh-huh. this is the opposite of what I'm trying to do interesting I'm the exact opposite of the screen like I could feel it in my eyes and that's also proven to suppress melatonin production for the first few hours of sleep which is like fundamentally important to wait, sleep wait, wait, wait say that again what is uh so the the blue light like have you, yeah, have you ever blue heard light. Of the blue light on your phone i know a lot of people that that's where it's more kind of uh brought up is your phone like screen time at night is does your phone have a uh, the blue light filter i don't know if my new one does i just got an iphone 11 like just oh, a few days ago okay okay so possibly, I, possibly you should look in your settings and see if you can do that because like that's really interesting because i can do that on my phone mm-hmm. and i kind of fuck around with it at night and like sometimes i'll turn on the blue light filter where it tunes out the blue light and it'll be a Ooh. it'll be really soft uh more of like soft lights like that it'll be more of like a instead of like the fluorescent blue that is interesting that's interesting yeah it's kind of cool how and like it's weird how light plays tricks on you like yeah, right. It makes sense though. Like with the sun and whatnot, we get in our circadian rhythm of, of yeah. our our own. Um, I don't know. I guess proclivities to go to bed at a certain time, wake up at a certain time. What is that? And mean? the sun kind of like dictating it. What what, what was it? Proclivity. Uh, it's like synonymous with like habits. Okay. So like like okay. pretty much just you get in your own habits of going to bed at the same time, waking yes. up at the same time. Yeah. And it really it really makes sense that the sun would dictate that, which is like going back to like the, the nomads living before, what, whoever those people were that yeah. sleeping four hours at night and four hours during the day. I find that really interesting. Yeah. They must have been cave dwellers or something, something to block out like external light. Yeah. Because – Had to be. Yeah, like how, how else are you going to – Or definitely like somewhere where they have uh, tree coverage – yeah, and they, they've got to have some sort of like some sort of barrier from the sun because there's I, I find it really hard to believe that you would be able to like just knock yourself out like that in the middle of your day. Yeah, right. And just close it out. That's that's wild. I I, I agree. I find it hard to believe. There's got to be some blocking of light in that yeah. process. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I guess I guess it's not super hard to achieve if you just find a tree with some good shade. Yeah. Or a set of trees with some good shade. Mm-hmm. Do you, uh, are you, uh, you a big nature guy? You like to go out and like, uh, go on like hikes and stuff. Yeah. I grew up in my childhood. I, I hiked a lot Hell in the yeah. woods. Like more personal or was it like just, just with, with friends, like friends, very exploratory kid. Yeah, so absolutely. I, I was very, I was hyper curious about like nature and mm-hmm. I'd go in my woods and whatnot and oh, I was yeah. building forts and Fuck yeah, yeah, you dude. know, that, that, oh dude, that is like the best thing about my childhood. Yeah. And just being able to do, I don't know, there's something therapeutic about nature. There really is. Oh, absolutely. It's the man. connectivity of oh my trees God. and the animals and the sound and just everything. It's, like, it's so like harmonious. They, uh, I, I, I don't know where I read this, but I, I vibe with it really well. And uh, some people say that you can, you can like, draw, uh, like, incredible happiness and peace and not necessarily peace, but like incredible happiness and uh, more of like personal feelings and like being very happy. It's like kind of like not a runner's high, but being in like a nature's high. And so like you're getting like overloading with like 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 uh, with like this happiness and excitement just from being outside in like a beautiful place or a beautiful uh, like wooded area or just anywhere in nature. And like that's your thing. And it's like you just you get this overwhelming uh sense of happiness i feel that it's it's almost like oneness with everything yeah because like i get that a lot when mm-hmm. I'll, like my walk like my walk to the gym mm-hmm. is like just really fucking happy and i noticed that over the summer one time because like i was uh i was i was going to the gym it was like it was like maybe 11 or 12 and it was a beautiful day outside and uh I could not stop smiling the whole way to the gym. I was just like, man, this is beautiful. Just like it, bliss. It was 
amazing. It was I I can feel this. I can feel that sensation like right now. Like I think about that. That is like an ingrained memory I will have for the rest of my life. That's interesting. I I can feel. What do you think it was? Like the walk up. It was. It was like, like the it build was the up. Temperature. Of it was like I didn't have any. I didn't have any music in. Um, it was like it was like I was listening to like everything around me, like the nature and like the wind blowing in the trees, and just like there wasn't many cars. It was just peaceful, and it was Springfield in the summer, so the campus was dead. So there was maybe ten people on this campus total. And it was just, I can feel that forever. And like, I, that is like something I go for, like I aim for when I'm in nature. And like, I felt that when I was like on this nature, uh, on, this, uh, on this hike in Colorado over my birthday. Fucking badass place to go if you've never been. But it was just like that sense of being in nature was just profound. That's interesting. That connectivity of everything, mm -hmm. that unity of, of, nature of the world of reality and your place in it yeah that's beautiful that that i mean how could that not be serene that's beautiful pretty cool is the, beautiful is the perfect way to put it i like that i like it was, that it was very special it's almost like in like theory that's kind of like what love is too you know like people always talk about like feeling feeling like oneness with like that significant other that other person that they have that they share that experience with so it's almost like being in nature and that feeling experiencing that connectivity and being open to it yourself because mm -hmm. you got to be open to it as yeah. well that's going to produce like love or peace or yeah. serenity or whatever it may be absolutely i totally agree with that it's kind of theoretical but 100%. kind of a cool that's, thought that's like a it's it's weird how like a lot of people have like uh like really similar feelings and like how you can like uh you can feel like a, a certain sense of like connectivity having like the same type of like personal experience with something which is like really unique maybe it's maybe it's connecting with our past ancestors and what they experienced and like how they saw the world in comparison to our artificial creation our, of yeah, the world and our bubble yeah absolutely i like that experience with um i don't know going somewhere near somewhere new as well yes. being kind of thrown into those the different cultures or mm -hmm. or just a new nature spot or wherever it may be uh, yeah i'm huge on trying to put myself in uh like new situations or uh not new situations but like new areas that i'm not accustomed to whether it be like somewhere in nature or like a different like just anywhere different mm. just like just like take yourself and just like plop it in the middle of nowhere and just like see how it goes yeah, all right. I'm just like see wherever life takes you. Forcing yourself into those, the, uh, just new environment. Yes. And see how you adapt. Yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's pretty huge on uh, for like personal level too is trying to force yourself into those situations, because uh, that can be really uh, that can be really deterring like before you do it, and I, I I don't know where I read it but it was like. I think it was a Will Smith quote, and it was something along the lines of, how could you be anxious or nervous about something that has not even happened yet? So, like, being completely, uh, like, frightened of, like, doing something that you've never done before. And it's like, the best things in your life could be on the other side of a door that you've never opened. Does he, does he use the comparison of skydiving? Like, yes. his experience of first time skydiving? exactly that. I think we have watched the exact same video. Yeah, we probably have. That's a really that is a really interesting thought because the build up, the build up's always worse than the actual event. Yeah, I do the same thing with public speaking in my classes. Mm -hmm. Like I, I definitely that's one of the few times in life I've had the experience of like actual anxiety and like kind of like my I could feel my heart pounding and whatnot. But being in the situation, you just you realize it's nothing to worry about, nothing to stress about, and it's not the discomforts usually to the build up. That's that's something that it took me a long time to figure out was like uh, public speaking and not being nervous in front of like mass audiences. It's hard. It it really is hard and it can be overwhelming to get over with. But I think the biggest thing that helped me now is that half the people in that fucking audience aren't listening to you. They're not paying attention. They're looking at, at their they're looking at that device in their pocket and they're going, "Man, this Twitter shit's cool." And like maybe half the people are listening to you, and like half of those half of that people are just like kind of randomly in so it's like you're really maybe only speaking to a quarter of your audience especially when it comes to school yeah I, it, like school especially i'm i don't listen to a single presentation that's not yeah. mine 
Yes. So it's like if you if you have that in your mind while you're like trying to give these presentations, I think that makes them a hundred and ten percent easier. I agree. I agree. That's always the comforting thought thought for me as well. Whenever yeah. I start freaking out about it, I'm like, yo, nobody's listening. Who cares? Literally. Like I, I actually had a over the past like week, um, the build up of like doing this with you was it, at one point it was kind of frightening. And then, like, uh, as, like, the day got closer and closer, I was like, man, this is kind of fucking cool. Like, I, I can't wait. Uh-huh. So, like, that, that anxiety that, like, had never – that wasn't there was, like, just manifesting itself and making it larger into something that was never there or could be. I love that. I love that. Because most people have told me that exact same response. Like, they're like, yeah, I was nervous before doing this, especially, like, the people that have never done it before with me. Yeah. They, they say that exact same thing. They're like, yeah, like, I was – I was really nervous at first, but then we got on and we did it, and it was nothing to stress about at all. Yeah, it's very—it's a very in the moment thing. That's how I see it, at least. Like you're very—you're very in tuned. That's why I like doing these podcasts so much. Something yeah. about putting on the headphones, especially whenever I added that element, and I don't know. It's just very like hyper present moment awareness. Yes, like you're just—you're in it. You're in the conversation. Yeah. You're engaged, and there are no other distractions. It's yeah. cool. There have been multiple times throughout this podcast where I will be so in tune with like the conversation with the re- that we are having that I literally will put all of this out and then I snap back in. I'm like, oh, fuck, yeah, that's right. Yeah, right. right? All this shit's in our face and like, uh, and it's just really weird that like I was able to like put all of that out and just like it talk to you like one on one like it was a real conversation. It was really unique. And that was a that was a very cool experience. I agree. I agree. It is very unique. I, I've yet to find anything that's like, even just like sitting around with friends, uh, maybe sitting around a couch or something. Like, I don't think that's even comparable. It's just, it's very different. I don't know what it is about the headphones or what it is that's so engaging for me I, personally. But I think it's got to be that, like, uh, that different uh, environment, you know, putting yourself in that different environment, having those different stimulations and like activating different parts of your brain you know like we were talking earlier about like putting yourself in new locations uh kind of like unlocks or triggers new parts of your brain that you don't use yeah and so like the same thing can be applied to like sports and stuff and so like trying new sports and overcoming those physical uh, uh those physical uh barriers is like really uh key and like important to like utilizing like your full brain potential and like really like i think maybe making yourself like a a more overall well-rounded person absolutely and so i think this like helped like a lot with like uh i, d- I don't know yet maybe like it'll probably take me a couple days to like think about it but i it was really uh, it was really neat thank you thank you do you want to keep going or oh, you yeah. want to you want to absolutely no it's, yeah, absolutely. Cool, we can go like another you want to go like another 10 minutes or something yeah fuck you. now that it needs to be like that laid out and that structured but going back to like the, you remember when i was talking about flow yeah 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 i uh, i looked at my phone when you left um, I put it like in the distance because like sometimes I have a really hard time with like focusing when like my phone's in my pocket or something, which is really weird. Yeah, it's interesting. So like I, I always like if I'm trying to like concentrate on something, I will put it as far away from me as possible. And I looked at the time and we were talking for maybe 80 minutes and it felt like 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, that is that that's super constant feedback as well. Yeah. Like that's very, very, very consistent System. feedback yes it's that's weird that's really funny that you say that and that's i would agree even myself i usually am unable to detect what it is yeah and that's cool that's i mean those are my favorite experiences in life man like the ones that i'm what i'm chasing when it comes to career whenever i figure that whole fucking thing out yeah that, that, <laughs> that whole fucking that thing. that whole thing uh so whenever like it what i'm going to be chasing in my career with my hobbies with like everything are the things that make time it laps as if time doesn't even exist. Yes. It just, Absolutely. time just ceases to be. Exactly. You just are as it is in the present situation. Exactly. And that goes back to that flow, like that stimulus. It's meaningful. Yes. It's very fulfilling that it's, those experiences in life. It's also very grounding and humbling uh, in a way that like, uh, that like that, that, that time that sometimes can feel like forever can in si- certain like certain situations feel like it's non-existent yeah which is s- incredibly scary 
I find it exciting. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, uh, it's overwhelming, scary, yes. exciting. It's all all of the above. Every motion, it's it's unique, and that that kind. Of, I feel that same way in the in the gym too. Mm. I, uh, you know what? Also, like so back in the day when I used to work out, it's entirely different than how I perceive it now. And so back in the day, like if my workout was an hour long, I was like, man, I really kicked ass in that workout. But now, if I if I push myself to the absolute maximum, I will never finish a workout in an hour, mm. which is just like a weird way to like perceive time and like what we like, what we do in that specific amount of time. It's do you think you're more engaged now than you were? Do you think that's a big part of it? <sighs> incredibly, incredibly more engaged, disciplined, uh, excited. Motivated. Yeah. All of the above. Whereas like before I was like only as like using the, the gym as a means to like get coaches off of my back. Mm -hmm. Whereas now I use it as an escape. That whole attitude shift is going to be everything. Attitude shift is everything. Attitude is 100% of the game. This is this is kind of going back to what we were talking about a little bit ago, but Jordan Peterson talks about this, and I'm not going to be able to give nearly as good of an explanation as he like just, he uh, would. Man, he just the way he says things, it just really just sticks with you. It is fucking incredible how like some people can just talk like that and it just is incredibly well said just articulate just so yes. powerful with articulate how is the fantastic way to I, I, I i love listening to him talk but he uh oh where's i going with that he he talks about he's like life is suffering and again i'm not going to be able to regurgitate this yeah. as nearly as accurate but life is suffering and is our suffering is almost the price we pay for being and the things that help dissipate suffering is meaning okay and that's kind of what we're going like kind of what we're describing right now okay like that fulfillment yeah. of engaging in something mm -hmm. even if it's going to have some some suffering some drawbacks yeah some things we don't like about it some problems that get in the way that are going to be incredibly difficult to solve yes if we can derive meaning from that then it kind of just alleviates any suffering which is I've I've found that very true in my own life, and it, just to have him articulate it like that, I found yeah. it really interesting. You know, I I kind of think about that in a terms of uh, like meditation, and so you were talking about uh, like alleviating, uh, what was that? What you said alleviating uh, suffering. Yeah, alleviate alleviating suffering through. Uh, did you mean okay? So did you mean like alleviating suffering through like let's say, like physical means of like. Like what did what did you mean mean by that? Like uh, suffering, I I interpret it. That's me kind of giving my interpretation of what he's saying. So okay. my interpretation would be mainly internal suffering, like okay. subjective suffering of what you experience to be detrimental to you in some way, shape, or form. Okay. So like for me, for example, like my big struggle has okay. been like school. Okay. Like I really, I really struggled, not really to get through school. It's just my lack of excitement for school. It leaves me. Um, I don't. It gets. It takes going back to the the negative state of mind. It takes my brain to the negative places most consistently, in comparison to like anything else. Okay. And that's it's it's just very frustrating to me because of how little desire and how little I care about it but I have these other things that I do like in my free time and there's so much energy going towards those things yeah. and I just don't get the same feeling I don't get the same satisfaction from school whatsoever dude I feel the exact same way sometimes I go through uh, like different uh, kind of like fluctuations with like my uh, with uh, my, I, I, I don't want to say like excitement but my desire to learn definitely goes through fluctuations. And so I'm, I'm constantly in flux about things that I'm excited or uh, I'm trying to think of a passionate, passionate. Thank you. That was the exact word I was looking for. Like things that I'm extremely passionate about. So like, I'm always trying to like find new things that I'm passionate about. And sometimes it's uh, it can be, it can be really frustrating. Cause like something I'll think I'm really passionate about six months later I couldn't give a shit about so right that's also something that just kind of like I always think about is like uh, 
how sustainable a hobby or an activity yeah. or that excitement, that feeling, that yeah. meaning you're getting from that is. Yes. Like this, it, I've questioned that exact same thing. I, I think that's, uh, that's probably the number one problem that I have in college and like throughout the past like four years is keeping it, 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 it not necessarily like keeping that passion but like knowing that something is good for you and keep doing it um because you know it's good for you mm -hmm. uh, whereas like actually having a passion for something that's good for you and keeping doing that because you're passionate about it i think that's like the defining line is like maintaining is uh, maintaining like those challenges that are not as desirable to you but you know that you need them so i think that's like a really hard thing to do I love everything coming out of your mouth hole right now. I love that. I love that. <laughs> yeah. I that's have. awesome. And that's a really awesome question to ask yourself. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. I, I, and that's something, uh, like, say, like, in, like, my fraternity-wise, um, like, the younger kids, uh, whenever, like, they'll ask me questions or something, I, uh, I always, like, one of the first things I ask them is, like, are you going to school for you or are you going to school because your parents said you should go to school? Mm. And it's it is actually scary and overwhelming about the kids who have no inclination to be in school, but and or the parents who are telling them that they have to go to school, mm. which is terrifying because 99 percent of the time these kids are going to fail out and leave, not because they're stupid or they're unintelligent, it's a lack of desire because they don't have any desire to do what they're doing. And so they might be incredibly talented and gifted in something else, and they might succeed in that aspect of their life. But when it comes to that school aspect, they couldn't give they couldn't give a rat's ass. And like that's okay. Like everybody's got their own thing. But like it's really important to ask yourself why you're doing what you're doing. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. And honestly, to answer your question completely honestly, like the main reason I came was because. I would say my parents told me to, and then the second answer would be that uh, because society told me to. Because I, I like I would like to be successful, but my my whole complaint, and this is a little bit of a a right turn on this, but I think the school of business, I think the practice of business, there's only so much utility in the actual like lecturing yeah. of it and like telling you this is how it is and Absolutely. memorize these definitions Absolutely. learn this learn that i think it's very very experientially based and i think it's very it's very based on connections as well yeah. so that's why i feel a little bit um how would how would i say at almost like a roadblock like i feel like my my life's like kind of on hold right now because mm -hmm. I, I just think I'm going to learn a lot of these things based on experience and whatnot as well. And I don't know. I just, I've read a lot of books on business and I've learned a lot more in those books than yeah. I have a, than in like my b business classes. Absolutely. I have two things to say to that. Mm -hmm. One, I think you are the outlier in the fact of, uh, in like the group of people who go to school because their parents are telling them to or because they feel like they need to be in school. I think you're an entire outlier in that fact that not many of those people stay with college because it's really hard to, to keep yourself motivated with that. And second, I completely agree with the uh, utility aspect of like business and college. And there can be very useful applications of business. Absolutely. Um, but I think that it, I, 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 this is going to rub some people the wrong way, but that's fine. I think that being, if you're going to college to get a four or a six, whatever degree year in, in uh, business, I think, I think that's entirely uh, useless unless you really are trying to go out and like own a business or something. Or, Cause like, I feel like a lot of times, like 80% of college is your experience outside of school. Mm -hmm. And like, I, I'm sure maybe you can experience this, like the things that you've learned outside of school trump entirely the things that you've learned inside of school. 150,000%. Absolutely. And like, I feel that way on like, maybe like a 60% a aspect and like 60% to like 40% school of like my experiences to like things that have shaped my life in just being in college and having those adverse challenges in my life and like how that's shaped me absolutely way more than some fucking class or some bullshit tests that I've taken I think a lot of people are going through a lot of shifts 
as far as figuring out who they want to be. Yes. Uh, going through the struggle of just a lot of different struggles, honestly. Right. I know I was going through the existential struggle of, like, why am I in school? Yes. And, again, like, going back to, like, who do I want to be with this? Those two questions. Who are you? What do I want to be? Exactly. I think there's a, there's a point where that shifts. And I think once you figure out who you are and that shift to who you want to be, I think that's when people either continue with what they're doing or they stop and change it. And I think that's the smartest thing ever is that if you're not doing something that you enjoy or like, that you stop it. Absolutely. You, you go and do something that you're passionate about. I think there's a really negative stigma with people who don't go to college. And I think that it can be more detrimental to go to college if you don't want to be there. I love that. I love that. That is super against the, the common train of thought. That's against the grain, absolutely. Absolutely. But I think that's it's really important. The equation is if you go to college, then you will be successful. Right. Are you, or you have to go to college so that you can be yeah, successful. You have the, the whole like the, the mantra, if you don't go to college, you won't be successful, little Jimmy. Yet there, this college is saturated, saturated with people. That it that that's like the craziest concept to me is like why people keep pushing their kids to college mm -hmm. just for them to fail out or just get some fucking useless degree that they're never going not useless degree but to themselves it, that's obviously an objective term useless mm -hmm. um, but like getting some useless term useless degree for themselves that they're never going to use and that they'd never wanted or never used never applied that they're never going to apply yeah yeah hundred percent. That's the psychology of doing something because your parents told you to. That's that's crazy. Hard. <laughs> I, I I think I have uh, I have that luxury in the fact that I have never had that overarching uh, parental aspect. Mm -hmm. Like I've never I've I've never had like my parents telling me uh, to do something or telling me not to do something. I've always been like a, a latchkey kid. So that, like. What do you mean by that? Uh, so uh, when I was younger. Um, I have been getting myself up for school since I was in the fourth grade. Oh, wow. Yeah. So like That my, is really interesting. My dad was in the military. He was always gone uh, overseas, so on and so forth. Like, they were divorced from the time I was in the third grade on. Uh -huh. So they were always separated. And so when they were separated, my dad was mainly gone 95% of the time. I would see him, like, occasionally. Mm -hmm. But then my mom would work these crazy long days. Say, like, my mom would be gone by five coming home at six or seven so that entire span of my day i am basically on my own oh wow like doing just whatever so i think it's in i, I wake I, yourself up get yourself to the bus make your lunch yeah if i missed the bus when i was a kid i was entirely fucked because my mom would be out of state oh wow so i would be like Hey, mom, um, I can't go to school today because I missed the bus. So then I'm just like doing whatever for the day. And that only happened a couple times. Like I was, I really liked to go to school. So like I, I really never missed that. If I missed school, I was upset, which is kind of oh, wow. totally not something you'd expect from like a middle schooler. Yeah, elementary right. Schooler. But it was like, that's like what it was. Is like, I, uh, I really like to do stuff like that. Like I like, I kind of, I kind of like the routine of like, elementary middle and high school like i really did like that but yeah going back to like the uh like latchkey thing like i um i kind of like i don't want to i sound like kind of like a really egotistical person when i say this but like i've kind of raised myself in the fact that like i would and my peers like they say you're raised by your peers from like say like 12 on uh -huh. but like that was like literally my life was being raised by like my friends and like their my friends parents and so on and so forth so like I just think that's really interesting to know. That is really funny. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that's I don't think that's cocky at all, or like self righteous. I I just think that's more. Uh, I don't know. You're you're independent and you're identifying why it is. That's that's really interesting now because uh, a lot of people rely on their parents more heavily at that age, especially. Oh, that's right. We were talking about kid like parents pushing their kids through stuff. Yeah, yeah. On a tangent for that so you night. push yourself to go to college is like yeah. kind of your end point. Yeah, yeah. Abs okay, there we go. I totally forgot why we were talking about that. Yeah, like I kind of anything I wanted to do, I did it because I wanted to do it, mm. not because somebody else told me to do it. So I think that was really crucial to my 
development as a individual. That's awesome. That's but awesome. I, and I, 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 and I actually feel I, I genuinely feel bad for like young adults who are overarched by their parents. Like their parents are living like vicariously through their kids. Oh wow! Yeah. Which is like, that's like frustrating to watch. Sad. And it's super prevalent. <laughs> oh, it's super prevalent. Like all the time. I used to have like young kids talk to me all the time. Like last year, and they were like break down crying because they're like, "Man, I don't want to fucking be here. School sucks." Uh-huh. But like, I don't want to look like a loser to my parents or like. I don't know. I think a lot of people are too wrapped up in what other people think of them. It's it, the parents one is a hard one. It's the hardest one to break. That is the hardest one to break. You break that one and you're free. As long as you can act with uh, independence, like you were saying, yeah, and integrity, genuinely believe and look yourself in the mirror and think you're a decent human being, then yep. oh, you might you might be able to figure some things out. Learning from your mistakes. Sometimes parents are going to hold you back and maybe you start to exceed them. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there's a possibility. I mean, there, there, there have to be families out there like this that their kids start to exceed them. Their parents get uncomfortable because it makes them seem as worse. So then their parents try to pull them back. Dude, I, I have, okay. So Jordan Peterson, going back to him, I don't, I, I'm not like always trying to like throw him into my conversations, but he literally talked about this and uh, he had, he had kind of, uh, played it into the uh, aspect of like making your room uh, something that you want to be in as in like a, like your own like space and then once you make your space as like your function of how you want to live your life like you you set up your bed so that you know how to sleep you set up your room so that you know how to live in it you set up your clothes so you know what to wear you know like you wear your clothes so you know what to do with your life um, but then once you separate yourself from that room say like you set up your room and you've got this oasis. This is where you hang out. This is what you do. And then once you're outside of where you usually are, you look into that space and you see how much lower it is than where you are now. So then say like you're always in that room and the people outside of that room are always wondering, man, where'd he go? What's he doing in that room, right? So then like separating yourself from that, you can really like see like where these people are at like mentally and like emotionally and they the people outside of that room will always try and bring you back down and bring you like back closer to them. Mm. And they will try and like remove that separation. It's a terrible thing. Isn't it? That's ridiculous. That is a, it's a it's a horrible concept. But it makes concept. sense. It makes sense. And it's it's really weird and I actually apl- I didn't realize that I applied this, but I did this last year at my old house. Mm. Um, the people that I was living with, uh, this room that I was in, I was kind of in a spiral going down. I set up my room so that it was exactly how I just described it. Uh-huh. Somewhere that I want to be, somewhere that like, I enjoy being in, my, my oasis. And then once I had that space, being in that other space, I could tell how it was bringing me down, why it was oh, bringing wow. me down. And like I could see the negative aspects of why I did not like to be in this space, but I did not know it until I was outside of it. In the like until you moved out. Yeah, and like uh, they would always ask me like, and it's really weird because the the people in that room would literally always ask me, "Why are you always in your room? Why are you? What are you doing up there? Like, why don't you like to hang out with us?" Uh huh. That was like literally the three questions. Like, why do you not like to be in this room anymore? And I had no idea how to answer it. And it ne- wasn't necessarily those people, but it was the culmination of all those factors of like why I had to leave. And that I is and really I, interesting. And I didn't know it. So I just I I watched this video the other day and I was like, holy shit, how true is that? That's crazy. Do you think they were dragging you down or what do you think no, it was? No, I don't, I don't I wouldn't say they were they weren't dragging me down at all. Like they were very good people. They were they're abs- they're high character individuals. Okay. I don't want to I don't I don't want to make these people seem out to seem like they were bad people. They weren't at all. It was just all of these things going on. And then like once I left that room, and like I was changing who I was. They're like, why doesn't he want to be with us anymore? But it wasn't. It wasn't. It, 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 the, the family aspect is different in my part, whereas they weren't trying to bring me down. They were just trying to realize why I had left that situation. Mm. Whereas instead, they weren't trying to bring me down. They were just trying to like conceptualize it. Interesting. Okay. 
trying to understand why. Okay. I'm gonna share this video with you, like after we, after we wrap up. So okay. I'm, I'm gonna. I want to watch this video with you, and then you'll. I think you'll understand a lot more of like what I'm saying. Do you want to watch it right now? Absolutely. Cool. We can wrap this up and watch the video. Hell yeah! What about? Hell bad. yeah, dude. Appreciate you having me. I on enjoyed bro. this. I enjoyed this. Another thing, uh, where can I find this video at? How do I? I'll send it to you. I'll really? send it to you via text whenever I upload it. It'll probably be about how many episodes? I don't even know what episode. I think it's like 43 or 44 or something like that. Hell yeah. And then, or 144. Um, oh, very cool. Very cool. And then I think I'm on like 131, 130. I'm on 132 right now. Very cool. So about one a week, but I'm probably going to up the frequency. So long story short, probably about like two, three months, I'd say. Wow. If that's cool with you. Dude, yeah, absolutely. It sounds very cool. Awesome. Can't wait. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Cool. I enjoyed this. Thank I you. I did too, man. That Thank was you. badass. That was badass.